Okay, uh, uh, I can hear myself now. Uh, welcome to the Immunities Committee meeting on Wednesday the 6th of July at 2pm. Uh, for the committee's benefit, we have an audio recording today, but not visual. Uh, so um, I will say your name when I invite you to speak, just so it's clear for anybody listening to the recording. Um, but we'll start off with the standard agenda items 167 stroke 22 uh, to declare any disclosable pecuniary interest, please. Do any members have any disclosable pecuniary interest? Uh, Councillor Tallit, please. The, um, the, the small grants awards are the not the one on the rest. Presumably that would be a non pecuniary interest, just a yeah. sort of personal interest. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Noted. I see no others. Uh, 16822, apologies for absence, please. Apologies from Councillor Loretto, Councillor Brindle, and Councillor Wright. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, 16922, to confirm the minutes of the Amenities Committee meeting held on the 1st of June. Uh, these were received by Council on the 28th of June. Are the ha uh, committee happy that these are a true and accurate record, please? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. I shall sign them. Well, I already have, actually. So I'm very glad you agreed that. Um, uh, moving on to item 170, financial report to receive and discuss the Amenities Committee financial report for the three months ended the 30th of June. I think they're on the screen behind me. Very if well. not, they were. It's behind you. Um, <laughs> but they were circulated by email today. Um, just a note on this, actually, while we do this, um, I had a look again on the Town Council website today for the agenda, and the agenda is there for amenities today, but none of our background reports, so I appreciate the finance report is here today because it was tabled today, um, but I do want us to get into the habit of papers that we receive as a committee being publicly available. Uh, you know, it's a matter of good practice for me that, you know, we have members of the public who either watch the recordings or come to the meetings it's one thing for them being able to have the agenda but for the public section of the meeting uh, what we are seeing should be able to be seen by the public so if we could try and ensure that happens that would be uh, much appreciated uh, anyway that's a digression um, uh, Alan financial report update anything you want to add uh, Chair, just in terms of the information, uh, last month I was really embarrassed because we hardly had any information in it. Uh, today I've done a little bit of a, of a self audit and the information is relatively accurate. Uh, there might be a few invoices that are still waiting to come through. Uh, in terms of income, there's not very much that happens. The, our major income is the, the grant which comes through in November, December. Uh, we're not, unlikely to get the prior income as we've term, we're in the process of terminating that managed property agreement. In terms of expenditure, we are down on budget. Uh, I have checked that all our major costs are in. Um, the only one that I just want to flag up is pay parks. That 15,000 is an overflow from the previous year where we had, we had we, there was a council resolution that that would be funded from reserves. So later on in the year, we'll do a transfer just to get the budget square again, because that's quite a significant overspend. Uh, in terms of open space maintenance, we have provided extra costs over and above the contract, so we, we haven't spent that yet. There might be some work that, that, that gets done. And in terms of trees, my understanding and my handover notes with uh, our countryside officer is that some of the surveys are taking place now, so there might be some work that comes out of that. But otherwise, we, we, we have underspent relative to budget. Um, there's nothing that, if we look at quarter one, there's nothing that flags up as, as a concern or worry. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Are there any comments or questions from the committee, please? Dave, yep. Well, Councillor Hodgkinson. So, no vehicle replacements now urgent on the vehicle leasing lines. How urgent is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's extremely urgent. We just, we, uh, Nick and I were discussing it this morning, uh, not because of this report, because it is something that's been on the to do list. Uh, and the risk is we're paying a fair amount of money for vehicles that are now past the best before date. And if there's any uh, wear and tear maintenance, we have to bear those particular costs. Okay. So there's sort of some penalties because we're out of contract. Well, we haven't got any, we won't have mileage penalties. That's okay. we way below our mileage oh, okay. targets. So we don't have those penalties. That's maintenance. But it's the maintenance because we have to pay for it. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, with wear and tear, which is going to, it's going to start kicking in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Susie, please. 
I think it was. Uh, we were hoping that they would do it a little bit earlier on. Um, and it says that tree surveying will be undertaken shortly. Is that within the next few months? Uh, we hope, we're hoping at, at the handover time, the next few <coughs> weeks, rather than months. So. Okay. Several queries about various trees. <laughs> well, every time we come to a meeting here, we get behind it off the one <laughs> in the front. Okay. Uh, Dennis, is that your hand up? No, no. no, no just, just testing. That, that, that tree is not, not counted trees. No, no. We don't no someone that. else can pay for that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I just check, Alan? On the income, there's the variance of 717. And then the, I wasn't quite understanding the point there, the 117 from UK Power Networks. Is that 117 towards that variance? So, so the 717, we've, just, we've received £117 from UK Power Networks. It's infrequent money that comes in every now and again. And the remaining £600 is a donation for the um, Thetford and Bloom Brilliant. competition. OK, that, that's, that's really good news. And on the tree survey, just going back to Susie's point, um, obviously uh, it's one thing paying for the survey to be done. Um, it's another thing paying for the works to be implemented that they you know, recommend. Um, have we, uh, what I'm really trying to get at is the cost of that survey. So have we still got a sufficient budget after we've paid for the surveying to actually implement their findings? How much of our budget has been taken up by the survey cost? Um, we pay a fixed fee twice a year, but yeah. the 1650 is last year's six month and one year works. So when the survey comes in, that will then be scheduled again. So unless there's something urgent, we'll have tree cutting costs. Otherwise, they will then talk to the contractor who actually does the tree maintenance and they'll schedule it in. But they, they have completed the last survey six months and one year uh, uh, works. I'm not sure that there actually is anything beyond that. I'm looking at Nick for. They're normally, they're normally pretty good in categorising it. So they'll high, medium, and low. So they'll start on the high stuff, then yeah. down to the medium, then down to the low. So they work their way through the risk factor on the surveying. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure we actually had some money left to implement what they're recommending because I know these surveys can be expensive. Yeah. Um, and can you just clarify for me, Nick, the company that we pay to do the survey on our trees, yeah. is that different to the company that it then is. does the work? It is. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions on finance report, please? Nope. So uh, we've been asked to note the report. Are members content to note? Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to uh, item 171, approval of small grants. Uh, to approve the small grant applications uh, distributed to members prior to the meeting. Uh, we had none last month and we've got two this month. Uh, Alan has done his usual check. Anything you want to add to the uh, checklist, Alan? No, I think um, the applicants had submitted all the information required. Uh, it was also distributed with the with, with this assessment. Um, and I think it's there's nothing from the from the paperwork that, that indicates that there's any risks. Whether you support the actual objective is obviously for the committee to to uh, decide. Okay. Uh, are members content to approve the applications that were circulated? Yes. Yeah. Can I have a proposer and a seconder? Happy a Dave and Dennis. Thank you very much. Um, the only thing I would note is when we get a large uh, organisation applying uh, for a grant, so wider than you know, operating wider than just Fetford, um, when we write and confirm that they've been successful, um, can we? Uh, point out that one of the criteria of the grant is that there have to be uh, beneficiaries from Fetford that benefit, just to make that absolutely clear. Because one of our criteria is it must be Fetford residents that benefit. They've said they will do, which I'm sure they will do, but if we could just highlight that, that would be good. Okay. Moving on to 172.22, committee officers report. I'm give Alan a break and move on to Nick. Uh, thank you very much, Nick, for circulating your report. Um, if you could take us through uh, bit by bit, that'd be really useful. Yeah, so to start with the street scene, um, town team has been working hard. So we've recently um, removed some of the litter bins in some of the clay parts um, around the town, particularly the ones that the original ones that were previously installed when the clay parts were put in. Um, they were open top and obviously causing issues of not holding enough litter. 
um, and fly tips. So we replaced those. Uh, we also had a, a spate of vandalism, unfortunately, to one of our litter bins, which was sort of liaised with the local police. Um, and that was replaced at Castle Park. Uh, benches and ply equipment around the town recently suffered a lot of ongoing graffiti. Um, as you're probably aware, there's been lots of issues with graffiti around the town. Um, we've been liaising with Norfolk Police. They came into the office yesterday and had a meeting with us. Um, and we're trying to pin down the sort of icons and attachments they're putting on the graffiti to try and distinguish who it is. Um, and they're going to be working with local schools and people to see if we can go down that route as well. Um, the team have also been sort of working on repainting some of the heritage benches again, um, sort of working our way through a refurbishment plan. Um, correspondence with Norfolk County Council has also been made again um, regarding the street lampposts, information points and finger posts to see if we can get those smartened up um, to try and help with all the bits we're doing. Uh, street furniture audit map is one underway um, and is now nearing completion. Um, this will include detailed information of each item around the town uh, for bins, benches, um, finger posts, etc. Um, including sort of town council assets, Breckland assets and Norfolk County Council assets. So it's going to be a lot easier to ascertain who owns these things going forward. Um, and so we can all work together to try and make a difference in getting these things maintained. Um, so the information will be ownership, when any new item was installed and last refurbished, so we can keep a check of when things are being done. Um, any issues, particularly in different areas, sort of vandalism and arson attacks that we tend to find is happening in certain points of the town. Um, and also when any item was previously washed and cleaned, so we can build up a regime of cleaning the street furniture as well, uh, working alongside Breckland. Uh, King Square is currently underway. Um, it, it's already been sort of pressure washed in one area and the seats are now being treated on the wooden, wooden seating. Um, so that's looking much better. Um, quotes are now coming in for the reseeding and topsoil and the mill lane. And hopefully that will be in process. We did say within the next few weeks, but we're going to leave it a little bit as a delay because obviously the school holidays and a better time will be uh, sort of September to do the work. So that will be taking place as soon as the the traffic calms down in that area. Uh, can I get you to pause there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, any questions for Nick on the first part there, which is sort of street scene, uh, bins, benches, and that sort of thing? Chris, please. I've just got one. It's not a question, but I'll give my thanks to Nick for his prompt action. Uh, when they were pressure watching, there's a bit of outside boots. They had a house right across King Street, and no trip out of sight. Yeah. I'm forward to that, and he put it right within a good time. Yeah. Uh, Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. They certainly had a telling off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions for Nick on street scene? No, the only thing I would add is on, um, you mentioned there about vandalism. Yeah. I mean, obviously, um, uh, vandalism has a cost to yeah. us financially as much as anything else. Um, do we log separately the cost incurred by us when street furniture um, is vandalised because you know we need to be clear that you know, we could have five more bins a year, for example, if they weren't damaged. I think that'd be useful to track. So again, alongside the audit at the street furniture audit, um, I'm doing a separate spreadsheet and that will cover any vandalised items. So that will distinguish how many bins are being vandalised within the sort of 12 months. Um, Brilliant. So that will give us an idea of what we're looking at expenditure-wise. Cool. And we upgraded the Heritage Trail roundels. Yep. Um, and I think we've passed it over to the Heritage and Town Events Committee yeah. to relaunch the Heritage Trail. Yep. And I just wondered if there was any updates. I know they've got other stuff going on. Yeah, I certainly haven't heard of one, but I will certainly chase that up yep. as a point of action. Yeah, that would be good, because I know they had yeah. obviously Jubilee to focus on. Um, but now that's over, I just, you know, don't want that to be lost. No, because that's fine. It's a, a good achievement getting all of that redone. Yeah. Any further questions on Street Scene? No, move on to town floor displays. Yeah, so town floor displays. Um, the new marketplace plants are all, all treated um, and stained, and they're blended in nicely now with the marketplace. Um, the contractor has revamped the Thetford sign. Um, that was beginning to look a bit tired and sparing, so that's had a good fresh revamp with some new plants and colour. Um, we've got the Anglia and Bloom judges visiting the town shortly. Uh, they'll be with us next Tuesday for the Anglia and Bloom competition. So again, the team are working hard in getting our sort of areas nice and tidy, ready for the judges to visit. Um, a portfolio of recent displays and map have all been submitted to the judges, and we look forward to welcoming them. And they'll be looking at the town centre, primarily the King's House Gardens and the cemetery as our town centre assets. 
moving on. Uh, the front garden competition, that's gone really well. So we've pretty much nearly closed the nominations now. Um, and we're up to 34 for the best garden, front garden competition nominations. So we've got really a good response on that one. Um, so that's a good one. Play parks, um, we're still waiting with the contractor. He's just about finalised the quotation for me for the next phase of the second lot of work. So we need to sort of be looking at for the play parks. And um, he's, he's probably got about two items that he's just requiring prices for. As soon as he's got those, he'll be forwarding it over and I'll forward it out to the committee so you can have to see what the costings will be looking like. And then we'll get the working party to meet and discuss going forward how we sort of phase those in. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very much. You're Any welcome. questions on the second half of Nick's report there? No? Roy? Yeah, um, the angling thing. I was watching some sort of television the other night about you know, the national one and, and various different bits. And they were really getting involved with the schools. Um, and if the schools did something, they got a lot more points. Um, and the judges were looking um, as part of the national, um, but um, you know, getting the youngsters involved so they see it happening, come and do a bit. Maybe we'll stop some of the vandalism and bits because you know if you get them young and they get pride in the town. And I wondered if we were looking at anything like that. I think that's certainly something we're going to be looking at next year. We've, we've sort of done it as an initial sort of stepping back into the, the regime of getting this sort of the town centre looking nice. And I think our way forward is to work with, like you say, the community. The, you know the local schools and different organisations, and we can all come together to make that difference for our town. Um, so that's certainly something that with the next years we'd be looking at to do and and sort of recognise all these mm. different bits. Mm, definitely. I mean, one thing that was well, two things that were news to me. One, the variety of categories that, that you know these sort of in bloom competitions. I mean, I don't know how many there were, but about four, 30 or forty, I think, different categories. The other thing was you had to pay to enter each different category. Was it three hundred pounds per category? So yeah. um, you know, which is quite expensive, really. Yeah. Um, so we entered three categories, Indeed. which you know is is a decent sum of money. You can do the maths. Um, so we'd gone for the free where we thought we were strongest, and obviously the cemetery and the conservation work there, King's House Gardens and the town centre floral displays, I think, you know, hopefully the committee would agree, all three of those are very good. Uh, so that's why we've gone for, for that. But there are others, as you know, so um, we're, we're testing the water <laughs> rather than entering all of them. Uh, Dennis, please. King's House Gardens. Uh... I think it's happened to pay the entrance fee to King's we, House we Gardens. Have, we have the town council. Um, because as King's House Gardens does not belong to the town council, yeah. um, how was that agreement made? I don't remember oh. actually agreeing to that. No, I, I would have agreed to it if it came up, but I don't remember doing it. <laughs> um, uh, we'll, we'll treat it as a donation to yeah. Sanny Ford. <laughs> how, how about that? <laughs> Uh, either, either that or we can send him a bill. <laughs> no, I think actually because these things are generally coordinated by town and parish councils, I think probably we could only be the applicant um, uh, on Stanley Forth's behalf. Um, on the Fetford sign on the London Road, I have seen the new plants which has gone in, which is great. Yeah. I wasn't clear about the grass on that little sort of triangle piece there okay. because is that our grass or are we literally just the flower bed because we're just the flower bed it's right. well, definitely yeah so i did notice all the grass around it hadn't been cut so chase circle yeah because the plants look great but if you're driving past from the road it actually looks a bit of a mess because the grass okay. around it is yeah. so long yeah and with me and yeah. i'll do some investigations thank you nick roy uh, yeah you haven't mentioned that do mind me. Uh, when they, since we've had the metal fence put in the castle park, all the way along the castle line, obviously the bank is north of it. Yeah. And they came along and, well, I would say cut it, but I would think um, mutilated it quickly <laughs> and left everything there. But one of the main problems was that the grass on the other side of the fence, which is actually in Council yeah. Park, yeah. Uh, was still too high because they couldn't get it. When they, when they used to do it 
But it was a wooden fence. Yeah. They could swim underneath it. Yeah. Now it's got to be trimmed from the other side. Yeah. So I'm quite sure that they're not going to do it no. because it's in our yeah. part. Have we got something in place? To make sure that we we can get it's something position. we can look at. It's definitely something we can look at. When the conservation volunteers uh, done their hedge planting, they planted an inside hedge along the inside of the fence line. So that's something we would have to have a look at and see how we can combat that. So obviously keep the hedge, but we need to put some sort of mulching down to try and stop the weed material growing up. Yeah. Um, so it's probably going to be a, a team effort to get that clean, but we could certainly do that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, just the people were saying as you walk up. Can't yeah. See yeah. Yes, I noticed that as well. They because they they la allowed it to grow high, which is great and good yeah. for the environment. But when they cut it, it leaves an awful lot behind, doesn't it? So. Okay. Um, and the only other minor thing, from an aesthetic point of view, is I do miss having the photos in the report. You, uh, I'll look into it. <laughs> you do. You do um, I do like I do like yeah. a visual. No, that's fine. Uh, right. Anything else for Nick with his report? Nope. Cool. Um, anything, Alan, from yourself under committee officer's report? The only thing is uh, that we do have to report is yesterday we met with our graziers. If you remember, we had at the last meeting, we had agreed to extend the, the existing arrangements and find out um, whether they would do Castle Park. We've actually had, like I said, a very constructive meeting with them. Uh, Nick will be meeting with them just to go around Castle Park to see what needs, you know, whether the existing fencing is okay uh, and how to put sheep on. And then we'll just be looking to have a temporary license for the end of the year, and then we'll go out for tender at the end of the year. So it was a really positive, you know, Nick could hopefully confirm, it was a really positive and constructive meeting. And I think they were very appreciative of the fact that they had a, you know, this was the town clerk, myself and Nick, we actually had a meeting with them and gave them. Um, listen to some of the issues that they've had previously. Yeah. Brilliant. It's really good news. Dennis, please. Yeah, I'll do great. Um, once we've done our safety checks and well-being things, um, what is the likelihood of actually grazing at some time? Um, when, when would that <laughs> uh, well, Unfortunately, there's been a little bit of mixed messaging from our side, apparently. Right. So we've been we've been deferring it to quite late in the season, and they've said it would be better if it actually started a little bit earlier. So so we that's part of the reason that Nick will have a meeting with them to walk through, and if we they they estimate that they could get a number a, a, a significant number of sheep on for the initial grazing, and that could happen quite quickly. Okay. Um, uh, I, well, I'll just put a plea out that we manage that sensitively because obviously for a very long while Castle Park has been enjoyed by families. Yeah. We've put the fencing in and then there's been a bit of a lag, which is absolutely fine. But if we put them in quite quickly, obviously that will be before the school yeah. holidays. Um, and I just want us to be absolutely clear to the public on why we're doing this yeah. and they can still access the area yeah. um, and still, you know, use it. And, you know, the flat grass is still there to be enjoyed. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. We, we have enough bad publicity as a council without adding to it. Well, on that subject, sir, uh, on sir. <laughs> community, community, oh, sorry, Chair, different, different. Uh, community engagement, we can take that up there, can't we? Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. No, I agree, Dennis. I just, you know, I'm very nervous about us doing things that we don't communicate the reasons behind. Um, but that is positive news. And just sheep, not goats. Uh, sheep, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but some of the they sheep might be more adventurous. Like <laughs> so you may end up with something that looks like a goat. But, uh, mm. that... uh, are they sheep that can get up the hill? That's why I want to know. <laughs> Brilliant. No, thank you for that, and um, appreciate you've sort of taken on that additional work, certainly in the interim. So, uh, both of you. Uh, any further questions on committee officers, or is everyone content? Yep. We'll move on to 173, which is uh, fish fast to receive an update and decide on the next steps. And um, forgive me, I assume it's you, Alan, that's going to talk us through what's in the report. All right, so if you could, that'd be great. In terms of um, since the last meeting, it could appear that there hasn't been very much progress. We've actually managed to have some engagements with the Environment Agency, 
they have confirmed that they are reviewing the application for a, an extension of the FRAP for, for two years. Um, once we have that, we as a committee can then decide what, what, what to do. Our suggestion to, to help us uh, get future funding is that as soon as we get the temporary FRAP, we will then go at an up, go out on risk uh, to see, to have an engineered um, solution to the, to, to, to the fish pass, which we think the EA will support, or reinstatements, which we don't think the EA will support, but we're in a position then to get those quotes, come back to this committee, and then decide on a way forward. But if, if we get, if we go, if we can get the tendering out and that process, at least we know what we're dealing with in terms of costs and timing, and we can get it into the funding cycle of, of, of the environment agency going forward. Um, what we have also done is we've had a number of questions asked of us, of, of, of the officers. Uh, one is about uh, the need to have a water transfer license. We have confirmed that we don't need that uh, um, because it was a natural beach of the river. Uh, there's also um, questions about whether we need to engage with the NC, with Norfolk County Council and or uh, the Environment Agency, and we have clarified that we just need to deal with the uh, uh, Environment Agency. But at the kind of position we're in at the moment is we're still waiting for that temporary FRAP. Uh, we are aware that there is a backlog at, at within the EA. They, they acknowledge that themselves, but they are paying attention to it. And we are, as soon as we have that, we can then decide on a way forward and actually put some action plans and timeframes to it. And I think that's really, like I say, no, not significantly different to what we've reported previously, but that's the current status from an officer's perspective. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dennis, you had your hand up. Is there any ETA on, the, on how long that backlog is? <laughs> you know, is there any history of time with the arrival of the crap? Because, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame we've been waiting so long already. But, but yeah. I know it's not something we committed to have control of, but. Um, it's, it's a shame it's taken so long. Yeah, no, I agree. Any other questions or comments, please? No, um, so I've got a couple. Um, firstly, just so I'm clear in my own head, the extension of the FRAP is, in sort of layman's terms, a continuation of the status quo. It's a continuation of the temporary fish pass. Correct. Okay. Which is fine. And why it was only granted for two years, if it's deemed fit to be in place for two years and suitable why a time limit is on it i really don't know um but you know we're having to go back through the process which is absolutely fine um what i'm more worried about is the longer term solution and uh what comes after the temporary fish pass or the temporary structure it's not fish pass temporary stones um and it says in our notes that we were sent out that the uh, we're going to go out to tender, uh, which is great. And I think we as a town council should be uh, doing two things, putting out to tender for an all singing, all dancing fish pass, which the Environment Agency tells us um, would be their preferred route. But I also think we need to be confirming as a council the costs for a more simpler reinstatement of the bank uh, and dealing with the issue aside from a fish mask, um, which I think you have covered in there. But I just want us to be clear as a committee that we need to explore and confirm what both options are, because in my own head, we need to be absolutely clear to the Environment Agency. We would prefer to deal with this. Um, with funding from yourselves and putting a fish pass, which is good for the environment. But if you don't wish to part fund it, then we're not going to mess around and we're going to do it ourselves and pay 100% of the cost for the cheaper solution. Um, and I think we need to be communicating that to them. Because what I am nervous about, and I think we should be getting clarity on, is it says uh, put out to tender and apply for match funding from the Environment Agency in the next funding round, to year 2023 to 2024. Mm -hmm. Now, that would mean that the temporary fish pass is going to be there. I keep calling it a temporary fish pass. It's not a temporary fish pass. The temporary structure is going to be there until at least the beginning of 2023. If they are going to make a decision on that funding application in April, May 2023, that's all well and good because one would hope that we could do it before the autumn and winter. If they don't make a decision to the January, February, March of 2024, I think that's a 
too long a period of time. We need to be clear that we have already been waiting since 2018. This needs to be resolved early in that financial year, not at the end, because then you have to appoint a contractor and they have to get the labour and the materials and do the work. We wouldn't be looking at construction until 2025, which I would say is unacceptable. So I do think we need to push them on the timing for the funding. Um, so if we could do that, I'd be... Uh, uh, very grateful. But I'm very pleased that you've included in this text the, the pursuing of the two options, um, because, you know, as a committee, we need to have all the facts before us so that we can make a decision. Is that sort of generally where the committee are at and sort of happy with that as a sort of overview of where we're going? Or am I just sort of running on? Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, the couple of other things that deals with the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, as many of you know, or probably all of you, um, we at this moment in time don't have a countryside officer for the council. Um, uh, and these two gentlemen here are picking up an awful lot of the work for that. Um, I would like us as a committee to request from the town clerk that we explore uh, buying in some professional support. Uh, you know, a consultant or somebody who is knowledgeable about liaising with the Environment Agency um, and is a bit of an expert on fish and fish passes to try and expedite this issue because, you know, we don't have the capacity internally that this requires and we need to make sure we do so that we resolve it. And so that will get, is going to be one of my uh, recommendations to the committee. Um, we, we have a financial saving because we have a... a, a a costed role that is vacant so we have spare money because we're not paying somebody's salary um so i would like us to recommend to the town clerk that we do that what i would also like to do is request that we have a report for this committee confirming land ownership in that area um because it is not clear to me as a committee member what land we own in that area um, and I would like to be absolutely clear on what we own and what we don't own. And I would like to see a map indicating what we own and what we don't own. And I would also like us to investigate um, uh, incidents of recent tree felling in that area to ensure that it is not any of our trees that have been felled without our consent. Um, and I would ask that we agree to that as a committee and we ask that officers look into that. Um, if I make that proposal, is somebody happy to second that, please? Well, can I just want to say, oh, sorry. Can sorry, I just want to say, sorry, I from the procedure perspective, <laughs> our standing orders prevent us from taping motions. So if the committee can just agree to it, that would be, and then we as officers will. will, will okay, so it. rather than a proposal and a seconder, we uh, have a show of hands, is that please. what we're asking for? Yeah. So essentially, we, well, we, um, in theory, proposed and seconded. Uh, could I have a show of hands in support of what I've suggested, please? Okay. You happy with that? Yeah. Definitely. That straw poll has been completed. Uh, does anyone have any further comments on this item, please? No? Are you content, Alan? Um, I think I just wanted to comment the fact that you, you said um, buy in some professional support. I think that's a good idea because, you know, these agencies and things, they take a long time to respond to anything and it could just run on for um, a couple of years. Mm, absolutely. Time to do no, I agree. Yeah, mm. okay. yeah, thank you for that, Susan. Right, that item being dealt with, we'll move on to 174 action points and updates to receive a verbal update from the officers and chairman. I would imagine there's nothing further to add. No, that deals with that one. Uh, and where am I looking? Last one on the agenda. There we Do we have a list of action points somewhere? Oh, I can't find that. Have you got them? Oh, there we go. We're on the bottom of the fish pass one. Um, okay, I'll just whiz through these very quickly to make sure that we haven't missed anything off um, our list for today. Uh, so the first one I think we've dealt with, which is to quantify the cost for the renewal of the play areas and to prepare an annual funding plan. And um, so we are not meeting now as a committee until September, Nick, and I would imagine that you'll get your list before then. Um, so if we could look to set the working group up before the next committee meeting, um, that would be useful. Uh, to discuss with Brecon Council the results of the mowing regime consultation uh, of their land, uh, that's an ongoing, um, um, obviously too late for this growing season, but. Um, something we can hopefully resolve in the autumn, ready for next year. Uh, open space policy review, target to be completed in September 22. Will that be an agenda item for September? I will make sure to. Have you got time to 
do the necessary and update it. We have to. <laughs> August is our, is our one of our favourite months for getting oh. our backlogs done. So. Oh. I'd better give you some more. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's great. If we can have that on the agenda, because um, it has been uh, uh, a query of a number of uh, open space usage. Well, hopefully, no more requests for this summer. Uh, Mill Lane seeding and signage we have dealt with, and uh, Nick's got that very much in hand. Um, to prepare an inventory of all street furniture. So forgive me if you said this, Nick and I yeah. missed it. So we were hoping to have an um, an interim report for us to go and have some homework and look through. Yeah. Is that still the plan? Still work in progress, yeah, because I've been short of team staff. That's fine. I've been out and about with staff. Well. No worries. So yeah. we may all be emailed with an interim report at yeah. some point uh, ready for the... Sorry, Dennis. Sorry. Well, I'm not. I'm working um, along Mill Lane section, and then further up, going up towards Berry Road, on <coughs> Queen Drew Beliefing, we had an awful lot of cars still parking there, and I had an idea they just run over our little hedgerows and everything. Is there anything we can do? Yeah, um, the, the conservation volunteers aren't still active, still aren't active they, even though they Stephen's active, gone. Yeah. Um, and I know that one of their regular things was maintenance of those trees and sort of looking after them and yeah. dealing with their little plastic cages and stuff. So, um, there was a lot of cost, and yeah, cut yeah. The, the biggest threat to the trees up there are the mowers, yeah, <laughs> because they keep mowing them. Uh, to obtain updates on the fish paths done, work in progress, and to consider whether to take on the temporary maintenance of a flint wall of school plane. Waiting on more information from English Heritage. Anything further on that one, or just yeah. leave it where it is? Okay. Uh, so that deals with item 174 and 175. And the final item today is 176, which is community engagement to discuss and agree any consultation or media release. So Dennis's point earlier about um, uh, media release in relation to Castle Park before we put them on there. Uh, I think is very valid. Are there any other um, media releases that the committee feel are relevant at this stage? No? Brilliant. With all the items on the agenda being dealt with, I declare this meeting closed. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I was just reading that. Communique. I quite like him that time. Communicate. My, 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 I mean, I'd love to talk to you. Let me stop sharing. Uh, he, so what he, is, he has sent us so much. So we 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 have we we have twenty days to respond. So within the next few days, because he sent us one, then he sent us the same one. So he added a whole lot of stuff on. So I'm taking that second one, and he sent that on the 14th of June. So our twenty days is up early next week. So I I showed our Tina yesterday. So how are we going to respond to it? Yeah. But we have to kill it because we are just getting. I mean, he's he's emailing us every single week. You can. Um, I mean, we've got a vexations policy, haven't we? 